This is the Dark Lord of the Sith, Emperor Palpatine. And you're watching, displaying model behavior. <laughs> Good! <laughs> Hello there gang and welcome to the Model Behaviour Top 100 Greatest Marvel Legends Ever Made. One of the great things about living in Japan is I've got access to so many awesome action figures, not including Marvel Legends. Ah, that's, that's a real monkey's paw wish type thing there. Sometimes you've got to search high and low to find them, but when you do, you go like... Man, it's it's so good to see you guys. It's like meeting up with friends you haven't seen in years. And especially recently on a little trip to Nipponbashi, I found this store that just had this smorgasbord of old, new, classic, retro, hot off the press Marvel Legends. A real amazing grab bag of figures. And I was like, dang it, there's just so much great stuff out there. I've got to make that top 100 list. So here it is, before I get started, a quick little caveat. There are gonna be pretty much all comic book figures in this list. Maybe a couple of MCU or different sort of lines might have snuck in, but that's not saying that the MCU doesn't have incredible figures. It does. I just don't tend to collect MCU that much. So therefore, this is heavily comic book weighted. And also, I'm throwing in builder figures as well. Regular line and the baths, they all go together. They're all amazing. Want to hear about them? Here it goes. This is a little one just for me, the Age of Apocalypse Iceman. He's not actually that sort of unusual in as far as accessories or anything goes, but just capturing a badass looking design. Oh, the AOA Iceman takes kind of a jovial, jokey character of the X-Men and makes him look like a cold-blooded, no pun intended, badass. This Iceman with the sort of blank ninja kind of look to his face and then the Jack Frost angles jutting off from him. Then Marvel Legends capture that in beautiful deep blue translucent plastic, but then give the brushing on top of those angles to make it look like frost. This is such a great little sleeper hit of an action figure. I absolutely adore this version of Iceman. And now we have a figure who wants pictures of Spider-Man. And he can demand them because he even comes with a pointing finger. That's why I love retro J. Jonah Jameson. I'm not a big civilian character collector, but man, JJ, he's, he's a lot of fun. Now that I think about it, it's kind of a shame that they reused the old comedian head for him. They could have done something a bit more expressive, but I'm going to allow it because the rest of him is just great. Because also, a lot of us hardcore Spider-Man fans, we want a comic book JJJ head or body or character in general. There you go, that's what I'm talking about, full-on action figures. But the general population, they might not, and Hasbro might have been a bit sheepish about doing what's literally an old man action figure, but boy, they did it, and they did it so, so well on the beautiful retro-carded packaging. Then with, this is what I love the most, not only does he have the rolled up Daily Bugle, but he's got the actual folded out Daily Bugle with news articles, with photos that are made of Marvel Legends. That is just, oh, guys, you, you did a little something extra there, didn't you? And I love you for it. This just makes him such a fun figure. So, 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 so cool. I was running out of words. Let's do the next one. One that purely appeals to my own personal taste and design choices and styles. Stealth Iron Man. This is just an Iron Man repaint. I mean, man, these things are like a dime a dozen, but gosh, it looks pretty. That midnight blue or whatever color that is. Oh, you, you have that as a base and then you just put some red accents on there and it pops so beautifully. I really, really love it. And he has some nice accessories too that do make him a worthwhile package. It's not just a lazy repaint. There is some nice extra work that has gone into this to making it not just a decent addition to your Hall of Armor, but just a standalone Iron Man figure. I really love it. He's just, he's just beautiful. Sometimes it's less paintwork details, but just more striking colors. It is what, what wins me over. And in this case, that definitely happened. The Crimson Dynamo. This is just a little builder figure that I just kind of fell in love with. Totally random, and to be honest, I kind of sort of 
bought the entire wave because I just really wanted this builder figure because I love mechs, especially sort of human mech suits I think are just wicked. And even though this isn't the most classic Crimson Dynamo design, I love that kind of steampunky armored kind of look with, with these, he, he looks like he's going to be chugging along with maybe plumes of smoke coming out of his smokestacks. And even though the color scheme is kind of basic, it's got little touches that really make him feel more alive. I love the kind of translucent, what looks like cooling gel in his arms. That's a really nice touch. And then the light up, not actual literal light up, but the, the, the lighter colors on his visor and the star, they look like they're glowing. They went for a little bit of extra paintwork to make it look like they're kind of like radiating out there. Then with all the little rivets and pins and screws and all the stuff that goes into him, he just looks like this great mechanical golem of a creature. So really, yeah, when I saw him, I was like, I, I really don't need a spy master, but I guess I'm gonna buy him because I love this builder figure. A little one that might be slightly unique to me, the Superior Octopus. This was a very random kind of obscure character, but also a very modern one as well, which was great to see. That's what's so good about Marvel Legends sometimes, is they can make figures that only just came out in comics a few months ago. Sometimes there are some caveats there, where it's based on concept art that doesn't actually match what it should be. But with the case of Superior Octopus, nah, they... <laughs> They, they, they nailed it. And I think it's such a cool design where they mash up the kind of Doc Ock, Spider-Man, Hydra imagery into this one figure and it works so, so well. Plus, this was a figure, I think, where they were kind of experimenting with some new styles of tooling and articulation. Really paid off to make a little bit of a sleeper hit of an action figure. You know what, girly? You're good. But me, my magic. You know, for an Irish guy, I do a terrible Irish accent. I'm I'm shocking in that regard. But Bullseye from the Man-Thing wave, ah, oh my goodness. Or arguably Bullseye from the three-pack, depending on which flavor you prefer. I think that the Man-Thing Bullseye is the more complete package. Why? Because he's literally the complete package. He has the gun that goes in the gun holster that he comes with. Unlike the three-pack one, which has a gun holster that, I don't know, he uses to keep bits of cheese in, I suppose, if he wants a snack midway through fighting Daredevil. <sighs> Hasbro, why do you do this? I mean, some people said, oh, well, maybe they took out the gun because they're, they're phasing out re you know, realistic looking guns. And then they release a whole bunch of figures with realistic looking guns. And it's like, next suggestion? Nonetheless, the Bullseye himself is fantastic because he was a single release figure in the Man-Thing wave and he had two different heads, both of them looking fantastic, especially his bald, unmasked head with the most rah, crazy expression on his face and the target etched into his forehead like it really has been carved in there with a knife. Oh. That's so good. Then he's got the hand with the throwing knives coming off of it. He's got his little gun finger. That, that, that's what it's called, I suppose. But all of those combined just make for such a wonderful realization of this character. The newer three-pack version, I like the blue on the body, even though a lot of people don't, because it's not the most classic bullseye. I like how it breaks up the design a bit more. And then the newer one has more animated paint on the unmasked face, so I think he's more vibrant. But again, if I could only have one, I've got to go for the original, which feels like that wonderful complete package. When he came out, they really gave a little bit of extra love to this figure, and it really shows. Another addition from the Age of Apocalypse, we have the Colossus Builder figure. This is a big hulking brute of a figure and that's one of the reasons why I love him. So much little bits of sculpting and artistic detail went into making all the metal rivulets and muscles and sinews in this character. He looks like the Oh, I can't remember the name of the artist. He was often accused of kind of mimicking Joe Madureira's style and that's true. Is it Ron Fenz? Regardless. It looks like his artwork, and brilliantly so. No offense to Ron Fence, he has his own look as well. I might have that name completely wrong. I'm gonna check that when I do the edit. Regardless, 
Colossus looks great, and especially the fact that you can kind of perch Kitty Pride on his shoulder, completely recreating poses from the comics. I love that. Other people have also taken off his suspenders and done some head swaps to make different versions of Colossus from the 616. So the kit bash potential is wonderful, but just as a hyper exaggerated looking character, I love it when Marvel Legends will specifically recreate comic book styles. I, oh, I mark out for that, and I mark out for this build a figure. Does he have extra heads? No, I don't even think he has extra hands. Regardless, he doesn't necessarily need them, because the snarling, sneering look with the bandana, that's AOA Colossus, who honestly is a complete dick of a human being, which is really fun to read. He's, um, he's not a good guy. He's really not, but he's a damn good builder figure. When I first started collecting Marvel Legends, there was one figure that was just universally known throughout the community as being an ultimate grail, and that was Rogue. Oh my goodness! It was so hard to get hold of the Southern Belle. And then finally, Hasbro went, you know what, we're going to acquiesce. We kind of like money, why not actually make some more of it? And they gave us the retro carded Rogue. And she's just what we were all asking for. She was that elixir that we needed. And man, when I first saw the face sculpt, I thought, ooh, I don't know about this. Looked kind of like a, an aging Southern male, one who's gonna come and try to seduce the gardener. But then you actually get the figure in hand, which is why you can't always judge those pictures. Because when you do, you think, yeah, this is the big hair, hi, sugar, Southern Belle from the 90s, Jim Lee Rogue with bright popping colors. And also it's a yellow that doesn't go green. And that's something that's been kind of grinding my gears with a lot of modern Marvel Legends is they can't seem to get the shade of yellow right. There's a Wolverine and maybe Siren as well, where it's just this kind of yellowy green. But that's a tangent for another time. It doesn't involve this Rogue, because this Rogue... They absolutely nailed the colours and the rest of the sculpt as well. Just a great overall package. This is a fantastic rogue. Ursa Major. He's a big, angry, grizzly bear. Gotta love it. So much fun toy potential for photography. Uh, I've seen some great stuff with Ursa Major. Also, he's part of a team and it's always fun to build out your team so you can put the Winter Guard together as well with Crimson Dynamo and the Lady and Red Guardian. The Lady's name completely escapes me. But nonetheless, Big Grizzly Ursa Major, so much fun. I, I've got a Gatling gun that I sometimes pose him with and he just looks awesome. So yeah, so much fun potential with this character. Not much as far as swapping accessories or anything is concerned, but occasionally when you've got a big giant jacked up Grizzly Bear, you don't really need any. Retro Carded Gambit. Ah, oh, Monsieur, when they first made the original Remy Le Beau figure, I was thinking, there ain't no way they're gonna be able to top this, Sherry. And then you know what they did? How? By making him brighter and more colorful to pop off the shelf with the wonderful translucent pink card effects and the great animated kind of looking style. This. This Gambit is my X-Men animated series Gambit. And again, the original one was one of the first ones I saw where I was like, gosh, that's hitting all the right nostalgia buttons right there. Maybe I should collect the X-Men as well. And then finally we get the more -da 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 style bright colors. This won me over so much. Just, just make sure you keep hold of his little playing cards because boy, you can lose those easily. And if you do, that's kind of a heartbreaker. But why is it a heartbreaker? <laughs> Because the figure's so dang good, you want to keep every accessory you possibly can. Because when you put them all together, it's absolutely gorgeous. Stepping outside the 616 slightly, we have Captain Carter. And you know what? I might be a little bit cheeky and throw in the Hydra Stomper with her as well. Because as a set combined, wah, they're both so good. If I'm only going to allow myself one, I'll give it to Captain Carter. But these two... Talk about plucking something off of the screen and just making it three-dimensional. That's what they did here with these beautiful what-if animated designs that also you can totally fudge into the 616 display if you want. It's so gorgeous. It's it, it's like Disney. It's a Disney-style animated design. The Hydra Stomper, amazingly well-realized, kind of like the... Uh, Ironmonger, there you go. Kind of like the Ironmonger figure, but it, because it looks more kind of bold and animated, it fits so much better with the Captain Carter what if sort of design. These two together as a package, mwah, chef's kiss. Captain Carter on her own though, equally worthy of being on this list, I think. 
Three Pack Electra. Talk about burying the lead here. The Daredevil Three Pack was basically a showcase for a brand new Daredevil. But what did we get? An incredible looking Electra as well. Of course, she's on the new female body, which is pinless and the double jointed elbows, all that nice stuff. But it's the head sculpts. Two of them, count them, two beautiful, beautiful head sculpts that really do harken back to two very specific Electra designs and especially the huge, big, exploding bird's nest hairstyle. That's such a great, iconic Electra look. I dig that so much. Dos Vedania, it's Colossus. The Juggernaut 2-pack Colossus. People were asking for a classic Colossus for the longest time. And Hasbro did what they do like to do where they're like, okay, you want this classic figure? You want this one that you're desperately after? We're going to give him to you. If you buy a figure that you might already own. For me personally, that wasn't a problem. I didn't own Juggernaut, so I was like, well, that's two birds with one stone for you. And both of them were great. What a marvelous box set that was. But it's Colossus in particular, who I think was just realized to perfection. He's so big and tall and shiny. That's all Colossus needs to be. An extra more raw kind of head would have been nice, but ultimately it, it doesn't matter too much because he's got his fists, he's got his grabbing hands, and he's just got his stature that makes him tower above the rest of the X-Men. Absolutely brilliant. I dig him. The retro Spider-Man figures are getting a lot of love on this list, but rightly so, because dang it, they're just everything that I want in an action figure, quite frankly. And Retro Mysterio is no exception. Just like with Kingpin and other ones, when they brought out the original, I thought, ah, that's really, really great. Mm. If only he was brighter colors and more popping and more sort of animated looking and more what I imagine Mysterio to be. And then that's exactly what we got. It's, it's funny sometimes when, as a toy collector, you actually get exactly what you're asking for. But in this case, I did. And he looks great, even with a translucent head underneath the fishbowl. Something that you didn't need to add. They could have just had the fishbowl and be done with it. But nah, -uh. they went full on there. And then the beautiful sort of shading, washing on the green costume, kind of like a yellowy sort of hue to it to give different colors and shadows. And just, oh, the more I talk about it, the beautiful translucent smoke effects around his legs. Yeah, that, that Mysterio, that is just, oh, it's just a gorgeous package. It really is. The Master of Illusion, it's never looked better. A little deep cut here with the armored Daredevil from the first Spider-Man retro wave. This guy, this was high on my want list because he's just so 90s. In the decade where all these costumes were redesigned and now we look back on them and go, what were they thinking? I'm the guy who's like, nah, mate, that armored Daredevil looked wicked and in marvel legends form he really does there must be someone on the team who is a big armored daredevil fan because they went ham on this character a whole bunch of beautiful extra sculpting with metallic paint and an unmasked matt murdoch head they went all in and it really shows an absolutely gorgeous package i love this guy it's amazing sometimes how we feel that some figures are kind of nickel and dimed. We're like, wow, you really tried to cut corners. And other ones, you think Hasbro just went, we got all this money left over. Let's give this character an extra head. And in the case of Black Knight, that's exactly what we got. So many accessories and little accoutrements that you can add to what is already a badass base figure with the great fish scale chain mail that he comes with that has a nice metallic paint job to it then the different heads that can totally change the entire look of the character i love the big black knight winged one looks so cool the removable sword i mean but all swords should be removable but you know what i mean regardless he's an excellent figure that's kind of a sleeper hit and quite hard to get hold of now as well the figure that made me want to start collecting the Marvel Legends X-Men line, the Apocalypse Builder figure. Oh, <laughs> I am the eternal rocks that smash again. I can't remember the line. Regardless, Apocalypse is a wicked recreation of what you see on the comic book page in glorious Builder figure form. I told myself I would just get Apocalypse and maybe the core five X-Men. That was... 
That was foolish of me to think that was ever going to be the case. But this guy, I saw him and I just fell in love because Apocalypse has such a cool design with the, 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 the big high collar, with the tubes coming off the arms. Just, just everything looks wicked and Hasbro nailed it. Along with the pincer that you can get with the Archangel, more on him later. It's just a great overall package, absolutely beautiful with the metallic kind of color scheme as well. <laughs> nailed it. Speaking of Apocalypse, where would he be without his horseman Archangel? And where would we be without our Deluxe Archangel? Well, we'd be missing a badass figure, that's what. Count them, five different heads, I think, if I recall correctly. What did we get? We got the unmasked Warren Worthington. We got the one with, with the hood on. We got the one with the skull mask. And for some reason, I thought that there are two more. Are there? Help me out. Maybe I'm just imagining things. I guess I am, because I can't think of them. Regardless, doesn't matter, because also he's got gigantic, B-E-A, beautiful metal wings the organic wings that apocalypse gave him they just look so great realized to perfection by hasbro at the time could they be bigger with more articulation yeah they could be but at the time in the price and what we get in that single box set yeah i think it was pretty damn beautiful is he needing an upgrade yeah definitely that bucky cat body that's just it's a pretty basic repaint but it's just the whole overall package that you get it's pretty damn beautiful. I love it when Marvel Legends go completely wacky, bonkers, and outside the box, and that's what they did with the Bonebreaker Builder figure. This guy, I mean, come on, a, a torso on tank treads. That, that's ridiculous. The fact that we have a Bonebreaker figure, the fact that we can actually make a Reavers team, that's what's awesome about Marvel Legends, is the obscurity of some of these characters. And boy, did they ever do him so much justice. They, it, it, the sculpting is brilliant. Could have used a little bit more paint on the tank, but I'll look past it because the Bonebreaker torso with the wonderful, ridiculous face sculpt, he looks so happy. He's a guy who loves his job with the glasses. You can move up and down. You can pose in so many different ways. I absolutely love it. It's wacky. It's bonkers. It's fun. It's Bonebreaker. One of the most sought after old builder figures for the longest time was the Toy Biz Blob. It was Toy Biz, wasn't it? I think so. But now finally Hasbro have done him a remake and they've done him justice as well and made him, in my eyes, a lot more palatable as well. The original Blob was, whew, he was tough to look at. They just, they really made him as gross as possible. Whereas this new one is a lot more animated looking and I really really dig it. He's just so nice and round and rotund and they haven't nickel and dimed or cut corners anywhere. He looks great. And then with two different heads as well, which again give two very different kinds of expressions. I really love what they did. He's an expensive deluxe, but I feel like you get your money's worth with him. This is a, this is a blob who's worthy of being in the Brotherhood of Mutants. You know, I really love it when lesser known characters get a figure that really just has a lot of love put into them. And that's what I feel about Deathlock, the zombie cyborg soldier. He looks brilliant. He's big. He's a big, hefty, but regular sized character, not a deluxe. And that's what's always nice when you pay the same money, but you feel like you get a lot of plastic for your pennies. Plastic for your pennies, that's got a nice ring to it. The fact that this guy has such a cool zombified looking sort of face, it, like the skin looks kind of tight and craggly. And then you got the cyborg side and just the huge big Gatling gun and the little pipe that goes into his chest and the bullet chain. So many cool little touches make him such a wicked example of a figure that maybe not a huge amount of people would have been saying, we want a Deathlock. But the ones who were saying it were saying it loud and clear. And actually, I kind of retract that. Who wouldn't be asking for a Deathlock? Yeah, you know what? We all demanded it. But dang it, we got it. Deluxe Black Widow. There are some characters and costumes where you see them and your mind instantly goes to the one iconic image of them. And for this one, it's the X-Men cover with gray costume Black Widow, Captain America and Wolverine on the front. Boom, it's iconic. And someone at Hasbro went, you know what? This version of Black Widow deserves the deluxe treatment and boy howdy did we get it. Every different accessory that Natasha Romanoff could have come with, she gets. And of course it's got the great jetpack as well so you can stick her in a flight stand with the great wrist 
blasters, all the smoke effects. It's just, it's a wonderful, beautiful set. I love her bomber jacket look. I love the short haircut. It's a great 90s Natasha that's been realized in this form for me. Ah, that's, that's my Black Widow right there. Those who know fear burn at the man-thing's touch. And your money might burn in your hand if you try buying the Builder figure, because he ain't cheap, and there's a reason for that. It's because, dang, he looks good. This is one that's rife for a re-release. Nice little colorful repaint, that would be great. Doesn't matter, though, because if you've got the original, ha! You got yourself a fantastic looking builder figure. I love all the tiny little details of the plants, the moss, the algae, the fungus, whatever it is that's growing on him is captured beautifully. Man thinks such a weird, bizarre, ridiculous creature. How you can make this monster with these giant red eyes look kind of kind of cute and adorable like a puppy. And that's what Hasbro did. I, I, I love this. This corner of the Marvel Universe where it is kind of creepy, kooky, ooky, spooky. You can have him. You can have Morbius, Blade, Ghost Rider, all these fun characters that fit so well together. And Man-Thing right in the center, oh, he just looks great. A wonderful, wacky, bonkers, off-the-wall figure, Frogman. You gotta love him. This is why I love Marvel Legends, because we get obscure, ridiculous characters like Frogman. Occasionally, when we get nickeled and dimed in various aspects, I think to myself, look, Dave. They've got to save money in some regards, because in others, they're spending money to give us figures like Frogman. And it, it's just, there's so much love that clearly went into this. Because someone said, let's do this justice. Let's, let's really sculpt and carve out the perfect, ridiculous-looking frog head with the human eyes peeking out of the mouth. He's got his spring heels. He's got enough articulation that he can crouch down and pose like, like he's about to leap into action. He's just fun, man. Not enough things in this world are fun, and Frogman, he's just fun with the big rotund body, different hands as well for posing options. The more I talk about him, the more I'm like, yeah, I love that guy. Here's an unusual little one. Cyborg Spider-Woman. A very modern figure and a deluxe as well, but I just love the concept of a giant hulking brute cyborg Spider-Man. We've got a smaller retro comic book cyborg Spider-Man, but just go nuts sometimes. You want to get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. And this is a nuts, bonkers, ridiculous looking figure, but if you want to have some real variety in your Spider-Verse display, this... This fits the bill. And also, I think, this is my little Dave's hot pick prediction. I'm guessing you're going to find this on clearance pretty soon as well. I can't imagine a lot of folks buying this for the $50 or however much it is for retail. I, I can see this going cheap in on the value clearance side at some point. And when it does, oh, maybe that might be old Dave's time to strike. Because I love the design of this. So wacky, bonkers, brilliant, unusual. All the things I love. Ultron. What a great version of this character we finally got. We were asking for a new Ultron for a while and now we got him. And they're doing another version of this guy on a similar body as well. But this one that came out first with the old Kirby Crackle which just brings him to life. That was such a great little design idea because Ultron's kind of plain in his classic form. Just, just silver all over. But then you got this popping effect coming from his mouth that just makes him feel so alive. Then with the classic sort of design, he's not very big. But then again, he shouldn't be in this version of him. I'd love a big monstrous builder figure Ultron. But in the meantime, we got this more retro one and he's pretty perfect. Gamerverse Miles Morales. Oh my goodness. The Avengers might have never taken off, but Spider-Man, he soared high on the Sony PlayStation and the Miles figure that was made in association with that game. I never really think about it as a Gamerverse figure because He's a perfect 616 Miles, and also kind of a perfect action figure as well. So great. The actual costume itself, lovingly. So lovingly sculpted with all the different texture and lines. It's not, it's not just a painted standard body. It's real work has gone into recreating the dynamics of this costume. Then with the unmasked head as well, the different hands. This is one of those ones where you look at it and you feel that like, yes! This, this, I'm getting my money's worth for this figure because again, it's a standard release figure. It's not a deluxe, it's not a special edition, it's just one standalone gorgeous chef's kiss mwah, action figure that not only could go in the Gamerverse, but it can go in your 616 and that's what makes it so great. This, 
100% did Miles all the justice in the world. A wonderfully random character, we've got Gwenpool, a character who's so unusual in Marvel Comics herself. I, I, I love the completely bonkers concept of she's aware that she's in a comic book. I know like Deadpool kind of has that too with his inner monologue, but it's not taken to the extreme that Gwenpool is. Whether you like it or not, I know some people like really hate that concept, but if you just take it as face value that actually that's not the case, she's just bonkers and thinks that, I can deal with that. And you know what? I can also deal with her action figure, which is just fantastic. With so many different accessories and ways that you can pose her. She's got her little backpack, which is adorable. She has so much character in her. That's what I love for toy photography. If you're a photography person, you can do so much with her. And she's got little things like the mobile phone and, and the, the, the ridiculous sort of selfie kind of poses that you can do with her. It's just fun. I think I've said before on this video, or maybe not, depending on how I order these when I finally do them, but regardless, not enough things in this world are just plain fun. But Gwenpool's one of them, and that's why I love her. Now you know me, I'm not a big army builder, but a lot of people are, and if you want to army build some ninjas, then you could do a lot worse than the Hand Ninja. One of the reasons I love this is, of course, he is a ninja that is an army builder that comes with a load of weapons. So that's great. So if you do want to army build these guys out, you can have some different variety with how you pose them and play about with them. You can mix things up a little bit. That gives you that wonderful variety. But also, I love the clever innovation of making him one that you could actually benefit your builder figure with because he was part of the Stiltman wave. And the Hand Ninja just comes with the extra parts of the leg. So of course, I've seen some absolute lunatics who have army built tens of, I was going to say, say hundreds, let's be realistic, tens of hand ninjas and they have their stilt man on his stilts going up to the ceiling of their toy room because why the heck not? Just some clever thinking on Hasbro's part there. Not only do you army build the army builders, but you can sort of army build and extend your builder figure. Double win, great choice there. One figure that I omitted from my list originally that the Facebook group was like, yo, Dave, you got to check yourself because this guy deserves a place on the list is 616 Kang the Conqueror. A figure that I was like, I don't know, is he really all that? And then people who actually appreciate the nuance of action figure design said, yeah, he is. Look at him. He is A, a perfect representation of comic book Kang and B, the engineering that has gone in to hiding and disguising all the different joints so he's practically a flawless looking character is absolutely superb and I was like yeah I guess you're right because he is he really really is the way that they've done the sculpting on on the sleeves of his arms on, on his his boots his thighs all the swivels are incorporated into the design of the costume and the design is exactly how he should look in the comics other people have enjoyed having the character so much they've made thrones for him and all kinds of stuff and I can understand why because even though I'm not a big Kang fan I appreciate hard work and innovation where it comes in and this one yeah, he's chock full of it. How is it that one of the most annoying members of the X-Men gets one of the best figures? I don't know, but somehow we've got Jubilee and she is fantastic. Again, like I've said, with so many figures on this list, so much new original sculpting going on here. But what I really love the most is you've got the two different heads with the bubblegum face and that that's awesome i really really dig it and also she's got the glasses that are translucent as well that makes a huge big difference because it feels like different materials that have gone into making this figure i know it's all plastic but it, it, it just feels more alive like it's not just been popped out of one single mold but there are different materials and things that just make her feel more high-end i really dig that this is one of the few figures i actually like changed slightly by adding some glue because the amount of times i dropped those glasses and i'm like one of these days they are gonna disappear so i was like dang it i love this figure too much boom now they ain't going nowhere so yeah with all of the bright colors of her 90s mall girl look it, it's just so much fun whack her in with your jim lee x-men absolutely terrific 
One of my big time grail figures that I was so happy to finally get my grubby little hands on was the Hobgoblin. The Jason Mackendale or Roderick Kingsley, whichever version you want to call him. This guy was just so much fun for a hardcore Spider-Man collector. Because Hobgoblin, like you got your classic Sinister Six Spider-Man characters that your mainstream folks know. But then as soon as you go into the comic book realms, it's like boom. Hobgoblin, that's the more discerning Spider-Man fan kind of favorite villain. And he got just the justice was done to him. He's got the fish scale chain mail. Gotta love that so, so much. But then the two different head sculpts that let you really have some fun with it because you can have classic Roderick Kingsley Hobgoblin. That's great with the tattered cape as well. It, it looks really mean. But then you've got the Demo Goblin face as well. This was before we had the Demo Goblin Builder figure, when we probably lived in a world where I don't think anyone even dared to dream we might get a Demo Goblin figure as good as we did. So until then, this Hobgoblin had it all. The only caveat is that his glider is a little bit disappointing. However, you can make up for that by getting the old Toy Biz glider. I found mine on eBay. You can actually find them on eBay. They're not hard to come by. Put him on that and boom. I know I'm not judging Kit Bashes on this list, but man, he does look good on it, doesn't he? You might think this is a little bit out of left field, and you would be right to do so as well, but I'm going to say it. House of X Cyclops. I don't know, man. I don't even like the House of X story, but this Cyclops, he just looks badass to me. I love the costume design. It's so basic but eye-catching with the overhead kind of look with the piping but also I really love how it's broken up with the gauntlets and the belts that just give it more of a tactical kind of look to it but also of course you got the head with the blast effect as every every cyclops should have this just makes him look like the awesome leader powerful you know front man of the x-men like he should do honestly i think the whole krakoa era of x-men is kind of toilet water to be honest but dang it if they didn't give us a fantastic looking cyclops the Juggernaut Wave, Deadpool. Oh my goodness, this is another wonderful example of Hasbro going, how much value can we give our customers? You know, we're not, we're not giving them enough value. We're not spending enough money on this figure. Let's see what else we can cram in here. This Deadpool has everything. First of all, just the design of the character himself. I love the more real world kind of look where he looks far more tactical and his, his, his mask has the little bit at the back and it looks like he's just pulled it on over his face. It's a really cool Deadpool design. And then you can decorate it however you like, because as I said, he's got everything. He's got all the different guns. He's got the bazooka. He's got the boxing glove that you can put on the end there. He's got the unmasked cheese pizza face. It, it's so, so cool. They cram as much value as they can into that package. And that's why I'm cramming him very high on this list. Jigsaw. The Punisher is slowly being phased out, or not even slowly, the, the, the Punisher has been phased out of, of, of Marvel Comics and all associated merchandise, I'm daring to say. However, before that happened, we got one iconic Punisher villain, and that is the grim, gnarly-looking Jigsaw. And it's always fun to see the Marvel Legends figures go a little bit outside the box, where often it is very kind of kid-friendly, put on the Toys R Us shelves, this is something that will sell to the masses, when they go the opposite direction and go let's make a gruesome gory stitched up hideous faced character with a whole bunch of lethal weapons around him you think yeah i see you hasbro thanks for that and that's what we got he is a mean nasty looking marvel max style jigsaw with all these different weapons of badassery surrounding him with knives and guns and bats it's a whole big complete package where you think Jigsaw's kind of an obscure character in the grand scheme of things, but Hasbro were like, we don't care. We're going to give him all the extras you could possibly want. And boy, howdy. I've said that phrase a few times, but dang it. I'll say it again. Boy, howdy. They really did. Now, y'all know me. I'm a big 90s kid, and nothing says 90s more than Tiger Stripe, Bone Claws, Wolverine. And that's what we got in the Love Triangle 3-pack. Now, look. We have had so many Wolverines 
over the years. You can take your pick as to which one you prefer, but it's the love triangle that has so many different posing options. So yes, you've got the bone claws, but you got the classic adamantium ones too. But then you've got the masked face, you've got the unmasked head, you've got the battle damaged head. We do not have enough battle damaged Marvel Legends. One of these days well, they'll give us a battle damaged Spider-Man, but until then I'll keep on asking for it. But the Wolverine man, they really, really went ham with this one. I love all the different posing options you've got. I think maybe color scheme wise, I might prefer the Apocalypse Wave one with the more metallic blues and the deeper yellows. But when it comes to all the accessories, Love Triangle's the ultimate Wolverine for me. A little one for innovation now and a reminder to myself that even though I don't like the story, man, that House of X wave had some really cool figures. Moira McTaggart. Again, a civilian type character. I mean, she's not totally a civilian. She's got her powers, blah, blah, blah. But you know what I'm saying. Doesn't exactly look like a superhero, but she does look like a really well-made action figure with the removable arms, with the lab coat that you can take on and off, the different looks that you can have with her. This is where you make a problem for yourselves, Hasbro, because you show us what you can do. Now I see this and I'm like, man, I want... I, I want all my characters to have removable arms and removable jackets so that you can do all this kind of thing. It's innovation, it's great, it works so well. It's practically two figures in one because you pay your money for one distinct figure but then you can have two completely different looks. I love it, I dig it, more like this please. Moon Knight. And this is a perfect example about how there are so many MCU characters that could be on this list if I was slanting it in that direction. But I'm a comic book guy, so I'm going for the comic book Moon Knight. But man, what a great comic book Moon Knight this guy is. With the different heads, you can have the full on, you know, dark shadow face or the more classic white one. But a character who could have been so plain, just plain white isn't because he's got some lovely dark gray shading and washing going on there as well to make it look like more of a three dimensional real kind of costume. And then on the more armored sections, you got this beautiful pearlescent kind of style going on that just makes him pops so much more for a character who's completely just white you actually find so many different ways of making him feel like more like he's alive and then all his different weapons the bow staff the sickles the ones that fit between his knuckles which oh my goodness you could lose so easily because if they fall on the floor they just look like toenail clippings <sighs> that was annoying regardless the whole package of this moon knight absolute perfection i love him and now it is time for the amazing Nightcrawler. There are so many X-Men that could have made this list. Nightcrawler, I'm going to give it to because, come on, we got three different heads to pose this guy with. And this is one of those ones that we could have been nickeled and dimed on, but we weren't. They went for these different distinct looks and all of them are so cool. I never know what one to actually pose my Nightcrawler with because they all look awesome. And then you give him his swashbuckling cutlass sword as well. The little tail that you can actually rotate. He's just super fun, man. And such an essential addition to the X-Men. And what's nice is that he's kind of kept the same look for a great many years. Yeah, I know he's changed up at different times. But what I'm saying is you can put this Nightcrawler in several different X-Men teams. And it kind of works. I put him in with my Jim Lee team because, well, that's the only team I've got now. And dang it, he looks right at home there. Herald of Galactus Thor. This is a figure that is just all original sculpting. And not only that, but he's big and badass. And you gotta have time for that. Not only that, but he comes with the two different ravens as well. He's got a beautiful translucent blue Mjolnir with the lightning coming off of it as well. This is a figure that really kind of took me by surprise because I haven't read that run of Thor. I don't have any kind of connection to that character. However, when I saw this figure, I was like, wow, I guess that's kind of like the best Thor now. And it's going to be hard to knock him off the top spot because, man, the amount of new, original, unique work that's just exclusive for him, that... That jacks him up in the listing quite a bit because, man, he, he looks like a badass. I want to talk a little bit now about Wasted Potential. No, not my academic career. It is the Gameiverse Abomination. Why have we not seen this figure used more often? Why have we not got a 616 Abomination on this beautiful, gnarly, scary beast 
of a builder figure. The game of us, oh, dude, that was that was that was something that that we never really should have wasted our time and money with. To to be honest, come on. But we did get the abomination, and honestly, I wouldn't even mind just fudging this character in with the six one six figures and saying, you know what? Yeah, that's a six one six abomination because the amount of sculpting all the little spikes and ridges and scales and armor on this huge hulking body and then a great paint job as well with the blending of the different greens and the shading it's such a shame it's it's from a you know a terrible game franchise that was kind of doa when it was released because buried in amongst all the stealth captain americas and the the space iron men and whatever the outback hulks and all the other nonsense from that wave we got ourselves arguably the best abomination we've ever had Coming to you live from Mojoville, or Mojoverse, it's Mojoverse, I'm not going to edit that, it's Mojo, the Mojo be it the deluxe one or the multi-pack one, whichever flavour and colour scheme you like, what an elaborate figure, again an update from the old Toy Biz one, but what an update it is, occasionally we'll look at figures and be like, oh man are we, are we going backwards? Gotta go back in time. In this case, we're not. We're upgrading, baby. We're upgrading in a big way. I don't know, maybe the paint scheme isn't as good as the Toy Biz one. I'm getting bogged down in semantics now. We're looking at the modern Mojo, and he is just so animated, grotesque, bright, colorful, just plain fun, man, with his little squidgy tummy and all the details going on in his spiraling scorpion type mechanical tail and the little legs that carry him and his just disgusting bulbous body. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to love about this guy. You know what? I'm going to give you a kind of a twofer here because I feel bad about including a figure that hasn't been released yet. Grey Hulk slash the new Joe Fixit. Okay, so Grey Hulk is kind of beautiful, but I've already included the 80th anniversary Hulk on here, so it's kind of the same figure, but he does have a different head, and man, that head, that Frankenstein's monster type head, beautifully realized. He's not so much Joe Fixit as he is first appearance Hulk. So don't go hitting me up in the comments saying I got it wrong. I, I, know, I know what I'm talking about here, not... Not all the time, but sometimes I do. But then to go with him, in the same slot, we do have the brand new Mr. Fix-It. And we haven't had him in hand yet, so we can't tell, but dang, looking at those pictures, he looks phenomenal, buddy. In the full suit, with the hat and the great looking face sculpts, that grinning look, ah, oh, he, he looks awesome. So I'm gonna put them both together as one, but take your pick, either version of the Grey Hulk, they both look like money, baby. And now, you bleeding wanker, it's time for the Juggernaut! And you can have either Juggernaut if you like. I'm gonna say my personal favorite preference is the Builder Figure Juggernaut. I love the different colors, more texture going on with him. He looks gnarlier, he looks a bit grittier and more real world. I like the details with the eyes and the face and just like the teeth in his mouth. And yeah, that's, that's my Juggernaut. That's the one that's actually making the list here. But it would behoove me to mention the Colossus 2-pack one that comes with the absolutely fantastic ripped away juggernaut mask and the beaten up bloody bruised face they did such a great job with that but then i feel the more animated style plain costume eh, kind of loses a bit of the fun sort of factor for me i much prefer the more detailed builder figure version but whichever one that you have in your collection you're onto a good thing because they're both fantastic juggernauts Catch you mothers at a bad time? Yeah, the line's not mothers, but hey, I'm not going to get this video demonetized due to language, and I wanted to make the reference to Chris Christopherson from Blade. Why? Because he kind of got his own action figure in a way with Old Man Hawkeye. Boom. Old Man Hawkeye, this is one of those Marvel Legends that almost feels like he shouldn't really fit in with Marvel Legends because he's got so much detail going on with him. Kind of strikes me as more of a G.I. Joe classified figure. But hey, all that's telling me is that Marvel Legends, they need to 
up their game when it comes to doing nice minute detail, extra accessories and more to the point, gorgeous looking face sculpts. The Old Man Logan 2 pack is a real deep cut comics lore type 2 pack, but that's what makes it so much fun. Both of the figures are terrific, but Hawkeye in particular with the two very distinct looks with the, the flowing Chris Christopherson hair, but then also the tied back ponytail and the sunglasses. Two distinct looks making this great, craggly, grizzled old version of Hawkeye. Really, really love this figure. And now we got ourselves absolute carnage. That's my little Cletus Cassidy voice there. Look, my favorite Spider-Man artist of all time is Mark Bagley. That is why I love the uh, Monster Venom carnage with the big sickle hand and the Cletus Cassidy unmasked type face. So why am I going for this more modern absolute carnage? Because you just got to take a closer look and when you do you see all of this gorgeous sculpted detail that's going on here. If I'm going for retro nostalgia it's got to be the Monster Venom one that wins. However I'm talking about the quality of work that is in this carnage and I love that they have literally sculpted not just the symbiote tendrils but the sinews of muscle in this carnage. It literally looks like he's had his skin peeled off. That's how gnarly this guy is. Add to the fact that you've got these great looking rosebush type thorns coming off of his back that genuinely you feel like you're going to prick your finger if you pick him up. That's wicked. Plus two different heads that have very distinct looks. You've got classic carnage and you've got the spiral absolute carnage look. All those different elements combined. This is the ultimate carnage. The House of X wave strikes again, this time with the Omega Sentinel. Man, this I don't even know this character, but I got the action figure and I just wanted to keep her as well because there's so much cool stuff going on here. First of all, just the design, the, the graphic design of the character, her, her costume, the red and the white, it just looks real nice. And then you've got two different heads that give two completely distinct visions of the character. That's really great. And they didn't stop there either. They thought to themselves, how can we add more value to this character? Well, she's kind of a mechanical shapeshifter. So let's give her a gun arm that you can port in there as well. So you can have her blasting away at these awful stinking muties. That's wonderful. There was a little bit of controversy with this character as well, because I think, stop me if I'm wrong, help me out in the comments. I think that the human looking face of the character is supposed to be of an Indian ethnicity, <laughs> easy for me to say, but they actually made her more Caucasian looking in the paint. And it's like, come on guys, you need to do better than that. But I think I need to do a little bit more research on that. Probably shouldn't have started talking about it without fully understanding the situation. But hey, <laughs> that's never stopped model behavior before. Proton Cannon Iron Man. This, this is one that was a little bit extra and a little bit special. And there's things that I don't totally love about it, but also just because of what it is. I gotta give it a shout out because it's going a little bit extra to give us something that's a little bit nostalgic and special. Proton Cannon Iron Man straight out of the Marvel vs. Capcom video game. I love being in my early 40s because that means that other people who grow up when I did are now in positions of power where they can make stuff that they're nostalgic about, which now I am also nostalgic about, which means that we get Marvel vs. Capcom style figures like this huge Proton Cannon Iron Man that also is based on the animated cartoon show from the 90s as well. So we've got the unmasked mullet hair Tony Stark look and the colors they've gone super animated which actually is a little bit too animated for my liking. I prefer more of a deeper more metallic kind of look to my Iron Man but you know what I'll even look past that just because of the huge nostalgia bomb that this figure is he's definitely got to go on the list. To me, my X-Men. Yes, Riders Professor X. Sometimes you just want a figure that's going to be exactly what you need it to be. And bam, that's that's what this Professor X is. They took the animated style hover chair and the one that we just so associate so much with our beloved mid-90s. I say our beloved mid-90s. Whenever I say that, loads of people in the comments will understandably always say, well, actually, it's the John Bryan run that's most beloved to me. Or it's the Outback X-Men. And I'm like, no, no, no. We all love the mid-90s equally. 
surely. <laughs> That's why I love having my own channel. So now it's Professor X in that great look. He's got the green suit, which also is really, you know, versatile for other figures as well, just as a suited body. That's terrific. And then the little extra added value in the hover chair, like he got the panels that you can slide to one side and he's got the different control panels and the, the little ball to control the chair. Those little extra touches go a long way to making it such a great figure. And the stand itself has the whoosh kind of effect, so it makes sense for him to be hovering up there. It just works so, so well. A little bit of a Chef's kiss of a fully realized concept of what an action figure for Charles Xavier could be. Nailed it. A wonderfully wacky deluxe figure that could have only been a deluxe is Modoc. This guy. Oh, I just, he's so bright. He's so colorful. He's so bonkers. He's so much of all the things that I love. The Toy Biz Builder figure was in high demand and rightly so because it still holds up great this day. But now the modern Modoc, they, they, they just gave us everything that they needed to. He's so chunky. He's so bright and colorful. I'm repeating myself. I don't need to. You can see footage of him. You already know what I'm talking about because there he is. He's just fantastic. If you've got an Avengers display, you, you've got to have him with your villains. He's just, it, it brings me joy, man. It, it brings me joy just to think about this bonkers figure. Age of Apocalypse, Sabretooth. The AOA line has had some real gems in there. Oh, I hope we get a third wave, but who knows? But the Sabretooth, at least we got him. And oh my goodness, did they ever do him justice. The big hulking Victor Creed, who's not crazy hulking. He's not juggernaut or anything ridiculous like that. He's just his own tall, thick, badass looking character with two different heads that give two very different expressions as well. He's got a real likable kind of roguish smirk on his face and that's what the AOA Victor Creed is like. He's he's a lovable badass and that's such a great kind of character that's resonated with people so much so that we still, you know, we wanted an action figure of him 30 years after the event and Hasbro absolutely did him justice. Pairing him up with Wild Child as well, God, this is such a goodie. You know me, I love innovation. I love things that are made specifically just for one character. And there's only one character who looks like Nimrod. And I didn't think we were ever going to get him because I was thinking, man, they're not going to go to all that trouble, time and expense just to make this one figure. Oh, no, they did. Granted, they put him in a three pack. But you know what? I'm not even mad about that because what we got was this absolutely perfect version of the terrifying sentinel mutant hunting future robot i saw him in the cartoon originally and i loved the gimmick that yeah you can you can put him down but whatever you defeat him with he will then be immune to the next time it's like for me that's that's pretty terrifying so being able to have him in with your x-men villains ah oh, just an absolutely essential addition the fact you've got the removable face plates as well so you can have the old classic pink one or the more modern one with the silver that's awesome. I love his spirally power blasting effect. That's really cool. Yes, his articulation is pretty dang limited. But then again, even the way he's drawn most of the time in his original appearances, he's just drawn as like this brick wall anyway. So to fit in with the character, I'm not mad about that. This Nimrod, ah, he's fantastic. Are you troubled by bad YouTube videos in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread when you watch action figure reviews? Have you or any of your family ever watched a boring action figure review? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then don't wait another minute. Log on to YouTube and call the professionals. Model Behavior. Our courteous and efficient presenter is on hand 24 hours a day to handle all of your action figure channel needs. We're ready to entertain you. Model Behavior. Yes, we're doing Ghostbusters now. Now, normally I get a little bit salty when a builder figure is just a regular sized action figure. However, when it's the Demo Goblin, I'll take it. I'll be a sinner. <laughs> I'll get the Demo Goblin. Because this is just an, a D list. It's fair to call him a D list character that got the A list treatment you look at all the gnarly sculpting that has gone into the face to create this demonic character and like the teeth are sharp the the the, the skin is is all scaly and the the hands the claws like he look he 
he looks like the Demo Goblin. No, no cheap repaints here. No, no reuse just to bash this character out the door. Nah, this, this is, this is what he should look like. And then you throw in that flaming goblin glider. And oh, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous set. And for me, a big 90s kid who's trying to build the, a maximum carnage display, this dude's essential. And the flight stand that he comes with as well, he might not be a big hulking builder figure, but man, when you talk about a standout one, this dude's it. I love my big, stoic, imposing, regal-looking villains and Strife from the new 5-pack. Yeah, he, he fits that mold perfectly. People were begging for a new Strife for a long time. The old one was going for silly money. So I'm glad that Marvel were like, well, Hasbro heard the call. They were like, okay, you want a Strife? We'll give you a Strife. We'll, we'll put it in a 5-pack, but at least you're going to get it. And get it, people did. And he lived up to the expectations. The new sculpting on there really capturing all the crazy spikes and points and angles of his over-the-top 90s armor. Was it even late 80s? Man, my, my comic historian brain is really overheating with this list. Nonetheless, though, he makes a wicked action figure. Omega Red, big bang of 90s, and that's what I really always want. And dang, with this guy, they gave him the big, hulking, terrifying looking body, which is what that character deserves. So much so that now when we're talking about other characters we want, we say they should go on the Omega Red body. Why? Because the Omega Red body's fantastic for a terrifying looking brute of a, of a villain. I see this and I picture Jim Lee. X-Men covers. I picture X-Men Children of the Atom video games. This is my 90s nostalgia character right here with the big, huge carbonadium tendrils that come off. Could you imagine if they were Mendy Wire? Ah, maybe they're a bit too thin for that kind of thing. Doesn't matter because the preset ones we've got, they still look cool. Doesn't really have anything else for accessories. No other heads, no other hands, but dang it when the overall package is that good. And he does have the slightly retracted tendrils as well. That's a nice little touch, which overall just makes an absolutely fantastic X-Men villain. The Stepford Cuckoo. Three figures in one, and that's always kind of fun. Although also carries the caveat of, well, if you want all three of them, then you've got to buy the same figure three times, and if you divide all those parts to one figure each, like, it's not that great of a figure. Shut up, Dave. Stop poking holes in your own argument. It's a really fun little figure. So there you go. One figure, three different heads, a lot of design choices and options, and actually I repurposed one of those heads for my Songbird figure, which looks so much better. So yeah, there's a lot to love about the Stepford Cuckoos. You gotta love it when D-list characters get the A-list treatment and no one got it better than Nuke. Who? Exactly. I mean, come on, don't worry. I know that you guys are comic aficionados. You know who Nuke is. But your general man on the street looking for an Iron Man or a Spider-Man figure, he's not gonna know who Nuke is, but we do. And we're happy that we got a decent figure of him. First of all, he's big. He's just a big, hefty, chunky guy. But then, all the details. First of all, on his on his tactical combat jacket. That, that in itself is wicked. Loads of extra sculpting on there. And also, I've kitbashed that onto so many different characters. At the moment, I've got a crossbones wearing that jacket. Oh, it looks so good. And then he's got the removable knife that goes in there as well. Great extra touch. He's got the huge big gun. I know that it's got a name. I can't remember what it is, but he's got that huge big gun. And then two different faces. You got the wicked looking stars and stripes painted one. That's really cool. But then you got the full on flesh ripped away Terminator look as well with the cyborg skull underneath. This is a figure that you would not have thought would have got such amazing treatment. And also, it's kind of a problem for Hasbro because sometimes they set the bar so high for themselves. This is what I want to see for my D-list characters because, man, if you can do nuke justice, eh, you can do that for anyone. How could I possibly have a top 100 Marvel Legends list without my boy, Ben Riley? In this case, the Scarlet Spider. More specifically, in this case, the retro Scarlet Spider. Ah, look, it's just the Pizza Spider-Man body, which, oh boy, it shows its age right now. My biggest want right now is an upgraded Scarlet Spider on the Renew Your Vows Peter Parker body. But right now, this is the one that we've got, and he's still so good because they went pretty hard with it. Scarlet Spider is one of the most iconic iconic Spider-Man costumes, which is so funny considering that it was kind of a joke when it was first made. And now, 
folks just love it. Why? Because everyone has amazing taste. The hoodie is brilliantly realized, all the tears and rips and ripples in the material, but then what I really love is all the extra detail they went to on the belt, the utility belt, on the little pockets and pouches he has strapped to his ankles, the external web shooters, the fact that on his little pouches where he keeps his different sort of ammunition for his web shooters, they've actually got the little details, that the, the, the buttons, the silver on there, all these little bits of extra work that they could so easily have done without, but they did it and they did it right. And then he's got all the different hands. He's got the unmasked blonde Ben Riley head, which Ben Riley was never blonde as the Scarlet Spider in the 616. But you know what? Not even mad, because also that head can go on the sensational Spider-Man. You can play around with it. So versatile, such a great package. It's my boy, Ben Riley, and he looks fantastic. This is one that not a lot of people love, but I know that I certainly do, and that is the Retro Scorpion. When the first Scorpion came out, I thought they did a great job with the bendy wire tail. That was wonderful, but I was like, ah, oh, he's just, he's the same metallic green all over, which does match with the comics. I had no problem with that whatsoever. They kept it accurate, but I thought just for the sake of looking good and interesting on the shelf, I wish that he was brighter and more popping, and yep. Yeah, that's exactly what we got. We went for the animated color scheme with this re-release and oh, it's just what it needs to be. He's kind of, he, you know, he's not an amazing package in as much as doesn't really have any other accessories. No other hands, no other heads. That would have been real nice. But the fact that they did all the things that I wanted them to do, especially actually painting the skin tone on the face, which again, in the comics, it's all green, which never made any sense to me. How, how does that work? What is he, applying green lipstick to his face before he goes out? It doesn't, it, it's just not logical. But now we've got that brilliant mask line with the distinctions of the skin. That looks so great. You've got the bendy wire tail there, still so versatile. He looks brilliant in a flight stand, leaping after Spider-Man. This scorpion, absolutely. Ah, the more I think about it, in my mind's eye, I can picture him and I just go, yeah, you're really freaking cool. Walgreens Punisher. This is one that I don't want to be one of those speculative stock market type guys, but if you got him, keep hold of him because I don't think we're ever going to see any more Punisher merchandise like this ever again. Like D Disney Marvel are done with the Punisher, which is a shame, but also I get it. So this, this is the ultimate version of Frank Castle, if you ask me. Why? Because it's my show. But also because it's the classic Punisher design, but with some more modern extras that make him look a bit more gritty and real, like the different pockets and pouches and all that kind of thing. Then you've got two different heads as well for two different Frank Castle looks, all the different weapons too. I mean, hey, look, we might not get any more P Punisher merchandise, but... I mean, hey, look, we might not get any more Punisher merchandise, but then again, with a figure like this, do we even need any? <laughs> Shocker! You can't hide from me! I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth! And he should do, because if he's after the Shocker figure, then that's worth hunting down, because what's up with this figure? What? Who, who at Hasbro signed off on someone going, hey, I'd like to do a completely new original sculpt just for this B-level Spider-Man villain? And someone in management went, yeah, go on, do that. And I love that they did because it it's great and it's so easy to kind of pass under people's radar because you might just see him in the beautiful retro carded packaging and just go, oh, it's just the Shocker. But actually take a little look at him. Everything on there is uniquely Shocker and it's shockingly good. He's got everything is just, it's got texture to it. The brown parts of his costume have a leathery kind of texture. The crisscross of the quilting actually has the indented lines and some people say that they don't like the fact that there are no black paint lines on there. I actually like it because his costume is just quilted. It doesn't need to have the black lines. The black lines appear via the shadows of the quilting. That just, oh, it's so good. Then different hands as well and a face that they've managed to make expressive even though he's wearing a full mask. This is a perfectly realized spider villain, a real sleeper hit. If you don't have him, you should go get him because he really is awesome. Big time points for engineering on this one. We have the new spiral figure with all six 
of her arms, each one of them beautiful with their articulation and posing options. And then if you want posing options, don't worry, they've got you covered with so many different weapon accessories you can give her to hold. And when you put her in a flight stand, have her doing her little spiral dance, my goodness, this for me, it comes straight from the X-Men Children of the Atom video game. That's, that, that's where my nostalgia comes from for Spiral and it just works so well. Marvel Legends, they, they had a tough order, a tough task ahead of them. Making a figure with six arms and make it work and function and they did. They nailed it because we had some six arm figures before with the six arm Spider-Man and Doppelganger. I wasn't a big fan of those. This time though, they absolutely cracked it. Over in the Age of Apocalypse, we've got the Sugar Man Builder figure. This is one thing I love about Builder figures sometimes, is they can go so off the beaten path when it comes to design and the creativity, because they're usually, not always, but they're usually going to make something from scratch. So they don't have to worry about conforming to any pre-existing molds. It's like, nah, let's go crazy. And in this one, they went pretty crazy with all the huge, big Sugar Man arms coming off of this disgusting, gnarly torso with the slightly bendable tongue. Just so much fun is in this figure. And yeah, they could have added a little bit more paintwork. That's why he's not super high on the list, is he is lacking in some paint details. But in sculpt details, in articulation with the arms and the hands, he's an outright winner. I, I gotta love this hideous guy. And now it's time for the Mighty Hercules. That was an impression of Slick from the WWF in the 1980s who managed Hercules Hernandez. That is a real obscure pro wrestling reference. I think a more common one would be, he's my little Hercules. Oh, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Why am I doing this? Hercules, what a great, random, ridiculous, bonkers figure. You want to talk about ridiculous costumes? There you go. Hercules in his, in his speedo and chains and straps. So much fun. Just a fun costume, man. You know from previous entries on this list, sometimes I just love something that's wacky and goofy and bonkers, and that's exactly what this Hercules is. Two different heads as well, so not only can you have his going into battle kind of look, but you've just got this ridiculous, cheesy kind of like, hey, what's going on, ladies, type Hercules expression, which I, I, I love. That's, that's what you want. Not everyone needs to be rampaging into battle. Sometimes you just want something expressive and stupid, and that's what this Hercules has. Then with his huge big mallet, mace as well, he can look mean, he can look goofy. What he will definitely look, though, is awesome on your shelf. Really, really love this guy. I'm smiling just talking about him. What a bonkers figure. A figure that really did bring me over to the X-Men line is Mr. Sinister. It's always the villains that look so cool. And with Sinister, they, they really did put in all of that metallic sheen to just catch the eye. And that's exactly what it did. And also with his great cape, I love the design where it's all just these little, little tattly things. I, I don't know, but the, the, the cape looks great. He doesn't really have anything in the way of other accessories. It would have been nice if he had maybe some different hands or, you know, a different head sculpt. But the head sculpt he does have with just the maniacal, I was going to say sinister looking grin on his face. I mean, that is Mr. Sinister. That's all you need. A really fun, perfect interpretation of the comic book character. And now the kingpin of crime. I'm only 2% body fat. Let me show you what 98% muscle can do. I think that's a pretty good kingpin. I've done it before on this show and other people disagree. Well, I'm still going to keep on doing it because I like it. I mean, just be glad that I don't go full Vincent D'Onofrio. I am the bandit on the road. Vanessa. Regardless, this is fantastic. When they did the Kingpin Builder figure, I was like, this is beautiful. This is a fantastic representation of the Kingpin. If only he was in the brighter, more classic colors with the purple pants and the cravat and all that kind of stuff. And Hasbro went, what's that? You'd be willing to spend more money? Don't worry, we got you. And boy, did they ever get me on the huge, big, beautiful retro carded back packaging as well. This is everything that I wanted my Kingpin to be. They just delivered. They nailed it. Not always there when I call, but they're always on time. And they were on time with the Kingpin. This figure is just stunning. A centerpiece for your Spider-Man display. Mwah! Oh, I'm dishing out so many chef's kisses on this video, but of course I am. With figures like this, it's really hard not to. 
what we're gonna do right here is go back, way back, back in time, with the Toy Biz Galactus. Now, of course, we got the HasLab Galactus. That's the, the ultimate figure right there. But the Toy Biz one kind of set the standard for what could be done in six inch scale action figure form with the build a figure concept, which was just kind of mind blowing. It was like, we can get this on our shelves. This is like a kind of scale Galactus. This is insane. And the amount of detail and work and artistry that went into it, I was like, wow, okay, we're in a we're in a new golden age of action figures right here, lads. This thing was just, it, it was a standard setter. And honestly, it took a long time to top it. Spider-Man's ultimate nemesis, the Green Goblin, has had a couple of versions. And the original, darker one in a more medieval chainmail sort of looking armor, that was really cool. However, you wanna go classic 1960s. And we got that with the retro Green Goblin and hoo-ha. Oh, they did a great job with this. A lot of people don't like his giant disco biscuit eyes, which I understand. But for me, I kind of look past it because just the overall package is what I wanted in my Green Goblin. So bright and colorful. But then with the extras, like the unmasked Norman Osborn head, who, if you put on the green suited Professor X body, that's a great civilian Norman. Then he's got the cowl around his, his shoulders as well, so you can pull the mask down, have it look kind of legit, you know? And then he's got the little touches like giving the pointing finger, so he can shoot his finger bang at Spider-Man, which also, little, little, little FYI for you, if you take the blast effect off of the White Rabbit's uh, umbrella, you can put that onto his finger. That looks really, really cool. And then also, because I know I'm going to be asked about it in the comments, and of course I should, because it looks wicked, I used the blast booster jet from the Deluxe War Machine. You can stick that onto the back of his Goblin Glider, so it looks like he got the smoke pluming. That's a little kit bash extra. Even without any of those things, you still have what I think is the quintessential Green Goblin. Could we always get a new updated, even better version? Absolutely. But until then, this guy is it. The Red Skull. Talk about giving extra value to a figure. This is a character who's so kind of important to your overall villain's display. They could have just, just done a quick, cheap, easy version, but no. We got a whole new body with two amazingly different, distinct heads. We got the gun. We got the cosmic cube. We got more hands than you can shake a stick at. There is so much going on with this Red Skull. They've reused the body a couple of times. Now it's a decent sort of pajama jumpsuit body. So I know that Dormammu in the same wave came out with that but Red Skull he he wore it better he rocked it and the fact that you've got the grrr, grinning Red Skull head with all the teeth showing and then you got my favorite one with the pursed lips more sort of regal sneering looking Red Skull ah whichever flavor you want having him holding the cosmic cube with the gun that's got the Hydra logo on it ah this is an overall wonderful package such a great villain representation Spider-Verse Miles. Again with the Spider-Verse, they have to completely make these from scratch because you're not going to reuse a Bucky Cap for these figures because they're so unique with their style and, and design. And Miles, with his kind of makeshift costume, with, with, with the coat and everything else, it's just, it's, it's so beautifully different to anything else. But still, when you have it in hand, it feels so quintessentially Marvel Legends as well. And that's what I love. With a whole bunch of accessories too, it's just a great fun little action figure. Cosmic Ghost Rider. Talk about completely bonkers mashups. You got Frank Castle, the Punisher, who sells his soul to Mephisto to become the Ghost Rider, who then attains the power cosmic to become the Herald of Galactus. What an utterly ridiculous mashup that created such an amazingly fun looking character. Cosmic Ghost Rider, you got the Flaming Skull. That's all. Flaming skulls are always going to be cool. But then you got the Punisher skull logo on the chest, which also looks cool. And then you got the fishbowl over the top of it. I just, I love everything about the design of this character. And now that Punisher's technically been written out of the Marvel Universe, I guess Cosmic Ghost Rider is actually the only iteration of Frank Castle who's kind of in the 616. I mean, he jumps about all over the place regardless. The action figure's beautifully realized because it just incorporates all the stuff that I listed that I really, really love, along with the flaming chain and, oh yeah, a huge big cosmic bike with the big energy ball at the front. It's, it's a wonderful package. It really is. He's got the two different blasters as well. He's got his chain that he can whip around. and It's just such a fun figure to have on your shelf. Bright, 
bold, ridiculous, colourful, cosmic Ghost Rider. Yeah, he's a real favourite. Representing the Spider-Verse, I've got a special place in my heart for Silk. Now, I originally put down the fan vote Silk. However, when I put this to the Facebook group, they said, yo, if you're gonna include Silk, then you really need to do the Doctor Octopus 2 pack one, because she's on the new body, the different head sculpts are really pretty, she's got more of a swirly-whirly web effect, so yeah, boom, there you go. I'm gonna include that one. I'm gonna show footage of the fan vote one, because, well, that's the only one I own. But the silk costume, I think, is really, really cool. It's a wicked design. It's a shame that I think just the, the S on her chest always looks a bit kind of like drawn on, looks a bit slapdash, but the rest of it, that always looks great. And the new different head sculpts, ah, oh, they look so dang pretty. So Silk, yeah, she's a wicked character. Great accessories, different heads, different hands, all these different posing options on the new female buck. There's a lot to love there. Deluxe Riders Punisher. If you own a Punisher figure, especially the retro classic one, y'all might want to hold on to it because you know what? We're not going to be getting any more Punisher figures ever again. I'm calling it. If we do, you can tell me I'm wrong, but you know what? I don't think I am. And this Riders Punisher, oh, you got everything with this guy. I mean, the bike is great. They've used it a few times, but it's just, it's a really great diorama piece. But then the Frank Castle, it's a real gritty, real world, realistic looking Frank Castle with the two different heads, both of which just look terrific. He looks like this grizzled old widow's peak, scarred, bashed up Frank who's been fighting his war for the last 20 years or so. He, he just looks grizzled and gnarly and I love it. And then all the weapons. You could imagine, from baseball bats to double barrel shotguns, machetes, an Uzi, it, it, it's so much fun. A fantastic package. This is arguably the ultimate punisher. Zombie Captain America. This was a real crowd pleaser that I was actually quite surprised about when people got so excited about him. He was on the top of so many people's action figure of the year lists. And at first I was like, I don't get it. I really don't. And then I actually saw him out of the box, in hand, in person, and I realized, oh yeah, there's a lot going on with this figure. Essentially, completely unique, all under himself, every little sculpted detail just for this guy. The amount of love and care really, really shows. So when you look at this gruesome, disgusting, decomposing, hideous, cartoony, in a fun kind of way, Captain America, you know that a lot of love went into it. And that goes a long way with our zombies. Toy Biz Apocalypse. This was one of those jaw-dropping type figures where I was like, how, how is this made and how is this a thing and, and, and how can I get on board with collecting these? They cost how much? Ah, oh, man. And that was in the early 2000s I was complaining about the prices. But then again, I had no money, which is, is not that different to today either. So, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And this Build-A-Figure Apocalypse, it was just the size, the scale of him was just breathtaking and they had such a classic brilliant design I just oof, I, I fell in love when I saw this it's now 20 years old it has a few flaws here and there but really as a figure that set a benchmark you can't top apocalypse or can you we'll find out Ironheart Boy, this figure got literally everything given to her, and rightly so. She's quite a cool character, gonna blow up in the MCU, hopefully, if her TV show is good. I mean, fingers crossed, I always hold out hope, even though I am often disappointed with the Disney Plus output. Regardless, the, the action figure of her Iron Man-style armor, ah, dude, they, they put in the work. All original sculpting going on here, so that standalone is great. But then she's got the two different heads. They've got the cool helmet design, but then the unmasked Riri Williams head. And I think it's a really beautiful sculpt. It looks excellent. No, no, like, vacant expression or anything. She's got some, dare I say, like, heart. She's got heart and soul in the look of that figure. Throwing in the blast effects as well, the smoke whirls, all of those things put together. It makes her a real strong figure that was part of a really strong wave. That was... That was a good time for Marvel Legends. Was that the Ursa Major wave? I feel it was. Stop me if I'm wrong. But regardless, yeah, she absolutely stands out as a highlight. She was, she was fantastic. Really great figure. Why am I trying to convince myself? She's already on the list. She should be on yours too. Silver Samurai Man. What? What a figure this is. I think a lot of people sleep on Silver Samurai. But if you actually pick this up and take a look, there is so much work 
that went into this figure. All the unique sculpting just for him, just for Silver Samurai, a, a dare I say B-list villain. They went so hard with the little details, the, the rope and the string that ties together his samurai armor. It's so beautifully done. Next time you're looking at your shelf, if you've got a silver samurai, go pick him up. Take, take, take him on a, a little guided tour because you're going to see little things, little details that maybe you took for granted before. Well, don't. You know, take, take this as an opportunity. Pick up your silver samurai. Give him some love. You'll be glad you did. Spider-Verse Gwen Stacy, Spider-Gwen. Not only her, but she comes with Spider-Ham too. That makes this a real solid package. And then throw in the fact that you've got two beautiful different head sculpts. That's just wonderful. So the Spider-Gwen design, I think, is one of the coolest new modern costumes out there. I just think the pink, the black, the white, it, it, it works. It works so, so well. And then you've got the unmasked face sculpt as well, which I think is just so great. Again, they captured that kind of CGI Disney cartoon look so perfectly. This is a great, great figure with a great accessory as well, definitely. And also you can put her in your 616 display if you want. She'll go in there just fine. And this is like the ultimate Gwen Stacy figure. Sandman, the Builder figure, one of my favorite Builder figures. Talk about doing justice to your Spider-Man rogues. A lot of people will say he's too big, but you know what, Sandman, that's the whole thing. He can shift and shape himself whatever size he wants to be. So as a civilian, maybe too big, but as a monstrous Sandman who Spider-Man's fighting, this guy's perfect. And you want to talk about accessories. Two different heads, the different hands, you've got the claw hand, the, the mallet, you've got the mace spike ball. So much fun that you can have with this figure, even with his ball jointed hips. That kind of shows the age a little bit. Doesn't matter though, because just putting him in your Sinister Six, he looks mean, nasty, especially with his kind of broken up Sandman head. The more I talk about it, the more I think, yes, ah, this guy's awesome. A modern character that I was really hoping would get action figure representation, and he finally did, is Null, the god of the symbiotes. Oh my goodness! Somebody had a lot of fun putting this guy together. First of all, he is big, towering, imposing. This is what a big, like, world-ending baddie should look like. I really hope that he does come back in the comics, as all characters do at some point or another, because he's got a really fun kind of demonic, jokerish, satanic kind of vibe to him that just looks wicked, wrapped up in a medieval Black Knight type armor with the terrifying skeletal grin on him. So, so cool, and Marvel Legends nailed it with two different head sculpts that, again, give two very, very distinct looks. You have the terrifying, jokerish, maniacal grin type face, and then you have the very pouty, lips kind of pursed, sort of very regal, king of the symbiotes kind of look. So it really, you could have so much variation in that. You've got the sword as well. It has a special name that I can't recall. Doesn't matter though, because it looks wicked with the symbiote tendrils all over it. And then just the, the, the bandage wraps over his arms. It's just, it's a character who kind of at a glance looks kind of plain because it's just all this black and gray armor. But then you look at it and you go, oh wow, a lot of love's gone into this figure. And it shows, and that's why he's on this list. And now we got ourselves the Walgreens thing. And this guy, he sets the standard for what a Fantastic Four figure should be. Yeah, this guy, he just is so big, chunky, chunky. He's a doorstop of a figure. Actually does make a few of the other Fantastic Four figures kind of pale in comparison next to him. And they have reused him a couple of times. But you know what? When you've got a Walgreens figure or a Thing figure, more to the point, that looks this good. You know what? You can reuse him and repaint him. With the Retro Fantastic Four, with the Super Scroll Fantastic Four, it's always essentially the same thing. And honestly, why change him? And now this next figure is... Inevitable. Yes, it is the deluxe Jim Starlin style Thanos. This, this dude literally just took a break from seeking the Infinity Stones to hop off the comic book page and into our hearts. This guy is just everything that he needs to be. He just looks so bright, thick, 
chunky, imposing, with his great infinity gauntlet hand, a face that just looks like he's delighted that he's about to wipe out half the universe. This Thanos can dominate your villain's display as well he should. It doesn't matter what line of Marvel Legends you collect, if it's Spider-Man, Avengers, X-Men, if you're getting like a wide spectrum, you, you, got, you gotta have Thanos, because besides maybe Doctor Doom, he is the big bad of the Marvel Universe, and he got all the justice done in the world to him. This guy, I've, I've used it a few times, but chef's kiss. That's, that's beautiful. An Infinity Gauntlet clad chef's kiss. MCU Iron Monger. There you go. We've got an MCU entry on here. Tony! Any excuse just to do the Jeff Bridges quote. This big, hulking, chonky boy. Man, what have I said before? Mech suits. Big mechanical suits of armor. Oof, yeah, that's... That's just great. You know what else is great? This this action figure. They really went hard. We were waiting a long time for this Iron Manga. People have been crying out for it, and then finally, Marvel Legends do it, and they did it so much justice. The size and the heft of this thing is absolutely awesome. The Gatling gun with the bullets flying off, the blast effects. He looks so mean, nasty, imposing, exactly what Iron Manga needed to be. One thing that doesn't get a lot of credit, I feel, in the first Iron Man film is the sound design. And it's almost like Iron Manga has a growl. His suit has this this kind of low resonance groan as it moves and it sounds like a beast and I can hear that when I look at this figure. It's so well put together. All I can say is congratulations Marvel Legends. You try to rid the world of action figures and you gave it its best one yet. I mean they didn't try to rid the world of action figures. In fact they're trying to consume my entire life with action figures. God bless you for it. Spider-Verse Peter Parker. So much love in this figure. Pretty much all of the Spider-Verse line, they're so highly stylized to look like the exaggerated cartoon designs from the movies that you couldn't really use use anything twice. It all had to be unique and Peter Parker, I mean that that middle-aged Peter Parker, that's that, that's my spirit animal right there. And they just recreated the animated style of him so beautifully with with the half Spider-Man costume, the, the big trench coat over there, the two different heads, the mask pulled back. He's got his soda cup that he's drinking from. All these little beautiful, minute details that make a figure that's just, it's, it's a labor of love. And I absolutely love it. Animated Dr. Octopus. This is a real tough one for me. I don't own him. I only own the original single release classic comic book style Doc Ock. But I've got to give it to the new animated one. Why? Bendy wire tentacles. I've got to give points for innovation. Or not even innovation. Just doing the obvious thing. But finally giving the people what they want. And it seems as though they did it successfully as well. You can stand this guy up on all four tentacles. And the fact that you can port those over to the older Dr. Octopus? Bravo, guys. That's exactly what we would have wanted, and that's what you gave us. So really, if we're talking about the perfect Doc Ock, it's got to be the two-pack with Silk with those arms ported onto him, especially because he has different hands and different heads. That would be the best, but I'm not grading kit bashes. I'm grading out-and-out -out releases, and in that regard, the animated one takes it. Sauron, another builder figure, but what a builder figure this is. The crazy giant pterodactyl dinosaur man. Yes, please, thank you, sir. May I have another? He's not perfect in as much as he takes up so much shelf space. There's a lot of real estate that this guy occupies. And because his tail is one solid plastic piece, you can't put him back against the wall. I posed him without the tail, just so I could put him at the back of the collection with his wingspan kind of dominating everything. But yeah, when you look at the different paint that's gone into like the shading and fading of his reptilian kind of look, the articulated jaw, just everything about him, he's, he's great. They absolutely nailed this guy. The name's Cable. 
he's from the future. That's all I ever remember hearing him say in the animated show. He should hang out with Bishop, who also just reminded everyone how he's from the future and therefore they're all stupid because he knows what's going on. Regardless, this cable, the Rob Liefeld X-Force cable, yeah, he got one hell of a Marvel legend. Sometimes it's amazing when you just see these standalone figures and you're like, this wasn't part of a box set, it's not a deluxe, it's, it's just a standalone amazing figure. I, mm, I love it so much because he's got so much going on here. Everything, every little detail. One thing you can always say about the 90s is they're arguably so over-designed with so many pockets and pouches and zips and add-ons and this time we got all of them in this design. I love everything. He's got the little bunny ear communicator. He's got the flashing glowing eye and there are a lot of characters today that have flashing glowing eyes where they skimp out on doing the sculpting. They just paint it on there. I'm looking at you Shriek. However with Cable no shortcuts were made. All the different guns as well. He's got his huge, crazy, big Rob Liefeld gun. He's got his double barrel shotgun. Everything about this character is wicked. Definitely one of the all time best. Renew your vows, Spider-Man. Oh man, for the longest time, Pizza Spider-Man was the quintessential go-to Marvel Legends Spider-Man. And then finally, along came a spider. And it wasn't Renew Your Vows, it was Retro Spider-Man, and he was great, but he wasn't quite there yet. It took the two-pack with Spinneret to finally fully realize our modern, awesome, pinless Spider-Man. And when we got him, Oh man, he was one of the only Marvel Legends that made the trip over to Japan with me. Why? Because Spider-Man's my guy! And this is the ultimate version of that character, in, in my eyes, in my mind. It's not just a flat, featureless body. It actually does have little lines of a costume. It looks like spandex is pulled over a body, which is just such a nice little touch that makes it feel more real. The unmasked Peter Parker head is great. It's just a great civilian, casual, easygoing Peter Parker look. But then we got the big eyes as well, the big 90s eyes on this figure. I love so, so much. This is exactly the Spider-Man figure that I want to be my quintessential Spidey in my display. How would I improve him? You know what? Honestly, I'd like some slightly lighter colors. A lighter blue, a brighter red. But you know what? If they want to re-release that at some point with that kind of color scheme, I I I'll buy two of them because I know that they're going to look gorgeous because this figure is the ultimate version of my ultimate superhero. It's Spider-Man. Renew your vows version. I dig him the most. It ain't a scene. Here, wow. Wow machine! War machine! Ah, deluxe war machine! You might think there's a lot of deluxes on this list. Well, of course, they they go the extra mile. And with this, they threw in everything they possibly could do. With the unmasked roadie head, all the different blast and booster effects. That's so, so great. And the fact that they took this awesome 90s war machine design with his shoulder cannons and rocket launchers and the metallic silver paint. It's everything that I would have wanted in a war machine. It's, it's, it's just the bee's knees, man. It's the mutt's nuts. It's the cat's pajamas. And if you can't get the deluxe one, then there is also a retro version, which doesn't have quite as many accessories. But with the lighter, more sort of Marvel vs. Capcom style animated paint job, looks arguably equally as awesome. I was torn as to which one to keep. I kept the original because that's the one that's closest to my heart. But man, either flavor of War Machine, you're onto a good thing. But the deluxe one, ah, he's, ah, he, he's everything he needs to be. So, cards on the table. I got all the way through editing this video. It took days. It was absolutely epic. I got to the end game and realized I'd somehow lost number 10. Don't know what happened to it. Had a little cry and then realized it was Thor. 80th anniversary Thor. How could I leave out the God of Thunder, especially when his action figure is so, so good. The size, heft, scale, this is what the Odin Sun should look like. Are you listening, Mayfex? So yeah, I love this guy. An easy, easy number 10 on the list. He shows his age a little bit with the pins and whatnot, but I mean, come on. As far as a classic Thor goes, you can't do any better without giving him maybe a cloth cape and well, that's about it, really. 
everything else is right there. I would have loved more of a raw kind of face, but you know what? It, it, it just doesn't matter. Because if you want a stoic, regal god of thunder who towers above his other Avengers like he should do, with also a costume that has so much work and effort into it. The black on the bodysuit looks like leather. It's got that kind of texture. The way that his cape drapes is just so regal and robe-like. Just everything about him, the wraps around his boots, the hammer, the, the, the muscles, the, the textures, the sculpting. Oh my goodness, this figure is worthy of the God of Thunder. Really wish I'd remembered to film an inclusion for him when I did the main video. Life Foundation Venom. Oh my goodness. It took long enough to finally get the Venom that we were all asking for, but when we did, man, they delivered. At long last, we got the Omega Red body for Venom, and we got the shoulder holes filled in. We got the classic 616 Spider design, and we got not only an unmasked Eddie Brock head, but an Eddie Brock head with the symbiote wrapping around it, which is what I always wanted. And we got it delivered perfectly. This was exactly what it needed to be. Yes, he's got pins. It'd be nice to have it pinless. But you know what? It doesn't matter because it's all black. So it's not like they stick out. So I'm going to allow it. The fact that you've got the unmasked head with the symbiote coming around. You've got the actual full-on symbiote head with the huge big lashing tongue. You've got claws. You've got fists. You've just got a perfect venom. Dang it! You finally did it. He had to be here, the figure that got me into making YouTube videos. Ghost Rider, the spirit of vengeance. Oh my god. When I saw this as a package, I was like, yeah. I, I wasn't even collecting the wider Marvel Universe at the time, but I just, I, I had to have the flaming skull spirit of vengeance on his beautiful rider's bike with the flames coming off, the translucent wheels, the removable shield on the front, everything about him. He's got the, the, the chain that's in different colors and just he's got an articulated jaw and a beautiful wash on the skull head and the little red eyes to give the penance stare with. Everything about him is just so dang good. I mean, even compared to the Mezco, this guy can sit on his bike properly. So, I mean, he's got that going for him. I absolutely still to this day adore this figure. I sold him in preparation of getting the Mezco and I'm like, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I jumped the gun a little bit because also I thought we would have got a new one by now, but we're still waiting Hasbro. The Ghost Rider's 50th, was it 50th or 60th anniversary? It's been and gone. Where's, where's the new Ghost Rider with a bike? Come on, people are demanding it. And if we get one, I'll buy it on day one because this original one absolutely Gorgeous! The biggest, closest place in my heart. I love, love this figure. The 80th anniversary, Incredible Hulk. There are so many different Hulk variations and permutations out there. We really are spoilt for choice. And you could argue that it's the 20th anniversary one who maybe is the more complete package. The fact that you could keep him in his box and have this giant, gorgeous, retro-carded looking Hulk. I'm kind of talking my way around to liking that one more. However, what gives the 80th one the edge for me is the great looking face sculpt, the lighter color scheme, and most importantly, that little rubber shirt that he has. That is what breaks up all that green and makes him so much more interesting to look at on your shelf. Yes, the 20th anniversary one has the nice little diorama piece and two different heads. That's great, but it's the 80th with that white shirt that just looks like such a classic retro Hulk. It's it's going to be tough to top and they still haven't topped it as far as I'm concerned. That's my go-to Incredible Hulk. The Retro Lizard. Let me tell you a little story. The game that we play with Marvel Legends is like the stock market. It's buying low, selling high, trying to get the most bang for your buck. I paid a lot of money for my Lizard Builder figure and I loved him. And when I heard that there was going to be a new Lizard, I was like, oh, you know what I bet they're going to do? You know what I bet they're going to do? They're going to just repaint the Builder figure, make him look even better. So I'm going to sell my Builder figure now while he's still worth a lot of money and then I can buy the new one, which is going to be even better, but for a cheaper price. And then they they do a whole new lizard that I didn't like as much as the builder figure but I had already sold him 
But then I actually fell in love with the Retro Lizard. It took time. It took time to come around. But when there is a package as well put together as this, it's difficult not to fall in love with it. You've got such great diverse looks with the kind of wacky, goofy Steve Ditko kind of big-eyed, gummy-looking lizard from his first appearance in the comics, and then a more sort of modern, traditional snout kind of lizard, but then also with the different hands and the vials and the beakers, so he's got the full mad scientist look. Yeah, it took some time, but this lizard absolutely won my heart. Now, I genuinely think he's one of the best modern legends out there. So good. Something that's real rare, but oh so special when it happens, is when Marvel Legends delve and dip their toes into cloth goods. It's almost unheard of, but we got recently the Retro Beast, and ah, oh, the original Beast was really quite a beloved figure. That's a really, really great interpretation of Henry McCoy, but then they just took it and they went, what if we did everything? with it. So we got the original version, the original sculpt, but then the first big thing is they gave us the more sort of classic friendly Hank McCoy looking head with the glasses. They gave us Professor Beast because the original one was very Jim Lee, very raw, white eyes launching into battle, which is great if you're launching into battle, but sometimes you just want the, ah, Dr. Henry McCoy, who's going to be in his laboratory, helping both mutant and mankind. Not the psycho beast that's in the comics right now, but there you go, that's a rant for another time. This figure though, just so gorgeous, with the different beakers and vials as well, but really, it's the lab coat, it's the cloth lab coat that just makes him an extra step above everything else. Throw him into a beautiful retro carded package as well, and oh my gosh, you've got one of the best Marvel Legends ever. Genuinely, I'd say so. Venom Pool. What a ridiculous, obscure character to make, and oh my goodness, Marvel Legends made the heck out of it. This, this is what Builder Figures should be. This is how we do it. Huge, big, chunky, chonky, no reuse here, baby. This is all OG sculpting, and they went so hard with all the different texture on him as well. His suit, it's got the Kevlar kind of feel to it, the well, well, gnashing teeth and tongue. The head sculpt is so much fun with the... Ma he's so top heavy as well. Massive big shoulders and arms and the fact that he still stands up so well. He's weighted beautifully. This guy, this is probably one of the absolute best builder figures ever made. I mean, stop me if I'm wrong, but this... they just... they just did such a great job. Venom Pool, I'm gonna say it. Mwah! Chef's kiss. What a fantastic Marvel legend. Retro Doctor Doom. Now this might be a little bit controversial because I think a lot of people do prefer the Super Skrull Doctor Doom because he's got the darker, more muted colours. He looks more real and badass. But sometimes you don't want real and badass. You want bright, colourful and popping. And a teeny little teeny tiny hint of some cloth goods as well with his lovely sash that goes around his shoulders. This Doom is the animated classic 60s death spot dictator evil doctor doom and i love him so much the old retro 90s bubble fantastic four packaging i mean that in itself it it pained me to rip that box open but dang it i did because whew, it, it it was worth it it was worth it to get him out of the packaging and have his spell books and the swirly whirly effects different heads so expressive well expressive as you can be in a static metal mask but this bright, colourful Doctor Doom. This is the one that I wanted. And man, I got him. Oh, and he looks so good. 20th anniversary, Captain America. Oh my goodness, this guy even makes me feel patriotic for the Stars and Stripes. Based off the Alex Ross 80th anniversary cap, who arguably could take this slot as well. I've got to give it to the more recent one with the brighter, more vibrant color scheme, the unmasked Steve Rogers head with the cowl that goes around his neck. Plus also, now that I think about it, he's got the straps as well, which I love the practicality of having those go around his shoulders. All these little touches make him genuinely the perfect Captain America. Yeah, could you have made him pinless? Yeah, there's all little bits that you could improve, such as giving him a shield that doesn't have holes in it. 
that is a big caveat. But it also speaks to how good this figure is. That even though we're getting Captain America without a complete Captain America shield, I still think he's one of the best Marvel Legends we've ever had. And now before we hit the number one spot, there are a couple of honourable mentions and they are very honourable mentions. So honourable in fact that they're not included in the list. Why? Because they are the Haslabs. I figured this is like comparing apples to oranges. I can't in all good conscience compare a $25 single release on the shelves of Walmart figure with a gigantic crowdfunded $450 Galactus. It's just... One of these things is not like the other. However, if we are just pen on paper looking at a Marvel legend and going, well, what is technically best? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say that Sentinel takes the number two spot and Galactus takes the number one. But you know what? They are entities unto themselves. However, we got to just touch on them. Oh my goodness. Talk about being a great time to be a collector. The Sentinel was just, whew. That set the bar. That set the bar for what a HasLab could be. What we could get if they really just, well, were happy to take all our money and then fun funnel it into an insane project because the Sentinel was everything that it could possibly have, we could have wanted it to be. Huge, literally, one twelfth scale can pick up the mutants in its hands, hold them over its head with the bright light up features. Ah, oh, just mm. oh, so so great! I was thrilled, just giddy with joy when I got this thing. And then Hasbro went, "Well, you like that? You're gonna love this." And they gave us Galactus, the absolute centerpiece of any collection because the thing the thing about galactus is that it doesn't matter what you collect whether it's x-men avengers spider-man galactus is the big bad more so than dr doom more so than thanos galactus is the world devourer and oh my god he looked incredible there was some handsome devil who got the very first review of it on youtube can't think who that was though Regardless, I, I just fell in love with this guy and now he is the centerpiece of my collection. He's everything he needed to be, again like the Sentinel with the light up features, the different face plates, all the heralds he came with which is kind of making up the whole package. Again, when, when your accessories are completely separate figures, you, you can't be compared to regular Marvel Legends. So the two Haslabs get their big separate section unto themselves. And if you want to include them in the list, then there you go. The Sentinel is number one and... Sorry, Sentinel's number two and Galactus is number one. But we're not talking about them. We're talking about the regular Marvel Legends. So let's find out who number one is. You know what? Maybe there's a bit of recency bias and that's okay because my favorite Marvel Legend, or arguably the best Marvel Legend, of all time, I'm going to give it to Doctor Strange. 616 Doctor Strange. Why? Because he's got everything that would imply him being a deluxe figure, except for the price. Because he was released as a single, standalone, regular Marvel legend, and he came with everything. First of all, 616 Classic Doctor Strange is something that we had been begging for for the longest time. That was so high up, if not at the top, of almost everyone's want list. And finally, not only did we get him, but it wasn't in a box set, it wasn't a two-pack, it wasn't even just a boring, not really satisfying re-release or a repaint. Nah, -uh. he got a whole new sculpt with every accessory you could possibly ask for. Wand of Watoom, boom. Masked Doctor Strange head, biggity bam. Random eyes closed meditating head, why the heck not? And then all the different swirly wordy power effects, he has everything going on. Absolutely adore this character. And if anyone kind of says, ah, oh, Marvel Legends, they don't give you this or blah, 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 I will hold him up and be like, yo, gripe all you want, because I enjoy belly aching too, but occasionally, we get a figure like this. And as Hulk Hogan would say, this is where the power lies, brother. Because Doctor Strange is a shining example of what Marvel Legends can do when they're doing it the best. Regular price, amazing figure, hoo-ha! Doctor Strange killed it.
And folks, that does it for my list of the top 100 greatest ever Marvel Legends. What did you think about the figures listed? Comment below. Let me know. More to the point, tell me which ones that I was an absolute fool for not including. And also which ones did not deserve to be there in the slightest. Because this was an incredibly subjective list and that's half the fun. So I want to hear what your choices are as well. And gang, if you enjoyed this and you like what you see here and you want to see more, then you know what you got to do. You got to join the 6-1 Clicks by clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons. That really, really helps out the channel. And speaking of helping out the channel. If you want to go a little bit extra, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash displaying model behavior. Toss a couple of bucks my way and you can enjoy all the exclusive videos on there, the little perks and the little thank yous that I give, including my deep dive into the animated X-Men cartoon, where I do commentaries and run-throughs and toy comparisons of each individual episode. That's a really fun time, but gang, in the meantime, Thank you so much for all of your support. This channel has been going for over three years now. It's It's got us through some tough times, and now we're enjoying it in the good times, and I'm so glad that I've got you guys with me to do that. Look at this big, goofy-ass smile on my face. That's what doing this channel does to me, and I really, really am grateful for the support you give. You know what? I'm rambling now. Let's finish this. So until next time, keep displaying model behavior. Hello there guys and welcome to Model Behaviour. Now, I know I do this a lot, but I really need you to go and sign up to the Patreon, please. I need money because my rent is due and my landlady is really mean. Oh god, she's here. Uh, just <sighs> hold that thought. Jeez. Hi, pal. Where's Evan? You don't have to raise your voice. You pay you! Look, I can pay half now. You pay no bit. You don't have to talk to me like that. I'm getting this crap. Okay, look, I thought it was clear in my email, okay, that I need just a couple more weeks. I work too hard. Can you give me two more weeks? I want my money. You need to relax. I don't call me that. I'm a grown man. Where's Evan? I just... I'm having a real hard time with things right now, you know? <laughs> don't make fun of me cry. I got my daddy! You're in no condition to deal with this right now, okay? Just take your beer and think and get out, all right? Sign up to the Model Behavior Patreon, quickly before Pearl comes back.